But for our 60th class, we are transitioning away from China and into the Ottoman Empire. And in my years of being a history teacher, I have learned that the majority of my students enter my classroom knowing nothing about the Ottoman Empire, or at least very, very little. But I am confident, after a couple days of learning about them, you'll know more than the average person. I really do believe that. However, before I get into the Ottoman Empire, I want to take a step back to two prior empires, the Byzantines and the Mongols. We'll start here with the Byzantines. And hopefully you recall the Byzantines took over the area that used to be the Roman Empire and Justinian's Code with civil law and the Great Schism of 1054. All these are important milestones. But for our purposes in relation to the Ottoman Empire, it's right here, the capital, Constantinople. Now, when Constantinople changed its name to Istanbul, that was a major shift in the region. We see the diminishing of a Christian empire and the rise of an Islamic empire. And if you think of the Middle East in modern times, it is still predominantly Islamic. It has a lot to do with that. Now, in terms of the Mongols, we've learned about them. And the Mongols took over a huge portion of the world. It's remarkable how large their empire was. However, it didn't last very long. Okay, here's another visual for you. I mean, holy cow, from the Pacific Ocean all the way into Eastern Europe and the Middle East, unbelievably large. However, when it goes away, what is left behind? Okay, there is the question. So, when the Mongols left, a new empire arose out of the leftovers of the old sultanates or kingdoms of Anatolia, which is modern-day Turkey. 1299 AD, one of these sultans, Osman, began to expand his kingdom. Now, Osman started the Ottoman Empire named after him. So, real basic stuff. The founder, the year it started, this kind of thing. Okay? So, here's the Ottoman Empire speed round. Now, real basic stuff again. It was one of the largest and longest lasting empires in history. It was an empire supported and inspired by Islam. It replaced the Byzantine Empire, the former Roman Empire, as the major power in the Eastern Mediterranean. Okay? Again, real rudimentary stuff. And you cannot take religion away from the Ottoman Empire. They are so deeply connected. Okay? So the Ottoman Empire was founded on the principles of Islam. It was united by Islamic beliefs. Churches, old Byzantine churches, were converted into mosques, the most famous one being the Hagia Sophia. Tolerant of other religions, especially the Abrahamic Western religions of Christianity and Judaism. And it encouraged loyalty from other religious faith groups. Okay. Now, to be a great empire, to be a powerful empire, you need to have money, you need to have great leadership, and you need to have military might. So of these three, the Janissaries are the military power. And yes, they wore cool hats. Now, these were a group of soldiers loyal to the Sultan. It was an army of slaves and Christian converts to Islam, and they helped to expand the empire. They became so powerful that the Sultans feared them. So the Janissaries, they kicked butt. I know that's not a real highbrow assessment of them, but they did. They kicked butt. These are some tough, tough soldiers, and these were the uh, people who allowed the Ottoman Empire to grow as rapidly as it did. And to continue on, in 1352, the sultans were able to cross over into Europe. And in 1453, Ottoman soldiers known as Janissaries conquered Constantinople. And the name was changed to Istanbul to connote that major shift. And it shifted from the Byzantine Empire, an Orthodox Christian Empire, into an Islamic Empire. Okay, 1517, Ottomans had control of Egypt, and it extended its control to mo most of North Africa. And these are the peak years, 1520 to 1566. It was under the rule of Suleiman the Magnificent, and he really was a magnificent leader. If you talk to world history eggheads, majority of them put him on the short list of history's greatest leaders, okay? And he wore a cool hat, okay? I hope you remember more about the Ottomans more than, you know, they wore cool hats. But they did. I don't want to, you know, diminish that. So anyway, Suleiman ruled from 1520 to 1566. 46 years is a pretty good run to run the show. And he made the Ottoman Empire the richest and most powerful empire in Europe and Southwest Asia at the time. To continue on about Suleiman, he's considered the greatest Ottoman leader of all time. He was fair. He brought justice and harmony. He even wrote a book called The Code of Laws or The Lawgiver. Feared and respected by Europeans. 
He turned Constantinople into a great center of art, music, writing, and philosophy. He just wasn't a military guy. He brought some of these other disciplines into the Ottoman Empire, and he wrote some of the most beautiful poetry of his time. So again, he was a leader who was respected. He was fair, but at the same time, he was tough. He brought the arts to his empire, and he was a poet himself, which is revealing of his character, okay? And it expanded quickly, because Suleiman had the belief the entire world was his possession as a gift of God. And vast amounts of Islamic territories were annexed or invaded, very strong military with the Janissaries. He was an expert in developing gunpowder as a military tool. Very simple truism here. You don't bring a knife to a gunfight. If somebody is pointing a gun at you and you don't have a gun, gun wins. It's that simple, okay? And you can see the very rapid expansion of the Ottoman Empire into North Africa, into the Middle East, into Eastern Europe. It's impressive, and it's quick. Okay, and again, these were the tools of the trade. The Ottomans were one of the gunpowder empires, and they mastered gunpowder with handguns, rifles, cannons. Okay, they did real well in that arena. But it didn't last forever. Okay, so in 1571, the decline happens after several military defeats. 1683, they attempted to invade Austria and Central Europe, and that was a failure. And then the money problem started happening, okay? You had trade competition from the Americas, and that was uh, lessening their bottom line. You had cheap products flowing in from India and the Far East, okay? Development of other trade routes, rising unemployment, and near bankruptcy. So again, going back to those big three, you need to have great leadership, you need to have money, and you need to have military power. We can see with the death of Suleiman, lesser leaders. You can see other nations figuring out how to beat them, how to, you know, they get, you know, gunpowder themselves, that kind of thing. And then they lose money. That is the formula for a breakup. So what we're going to do now is slowing it down. And if you miss class on uh, Google Classroom for class 60, you're going to see a Venn diagram. And one of these circles says the Ottoman Empire and the other says China and there's a criteria to break it down but the point of this video is just to give you the basics of the Ottoman Empire um, your book gives more details to that and if you complete that Venn diagram and turn it in you will be caught up with the rest of the class and we'll go into the Ottoman Empire in more detail over the next couple days so Hopefully you have a better understanding and you have more knowledge than the average person. That was my hope, and I appreciate you watching.